Happy Arvo. Hello. What's going on? Half is interesting. Put up this video. I love this guy's channel. Go check it out. Link down below. The single Australian farm that's bigger than 49 countries. <laughs> I wonder if that means 49 combined? That, that would be impossible. But... Yeah, that's that, that's impossible. The more I now that I said that out loud, it's got to be like so that means it's the 50th it would be it would be the 50th largest country if it was a country. I think. All right, let's let's watch. <laughs> Anna Creek Station is massive. Anna Whether you Creek. describe it as a privately held piece of property or a ranch, it's the biggest one of those. It's as tall as the Netherlands. Can a ranch not be a privately held piece of property as wide as Wales. wow it's as big as the netherlands in basically every article about it adeptly mentions that it's bigger in total size than israel a perfect choice for comparison given that israel's size is very constant and in no way subject to controversy <laughs> it also happens to be bigger than el salvador belize djibouti and literally dozens of other djibouti other countries but hey all engagements is good engagement i didn't know djibouti was a country to be honest well its size is surprising and a creek's location isn't. Australia, turns out, is absolutely littered with giant cattle stations. Clifton Hill Station is 6,650 square miles, right around the size of East Watini. How would you even, like, go about owning or taking care of remotely this much land? That doesn't doesn't compute with me. Alexandria Station is 6,220 square miles, also around the size of East Watini, and the station, which is a restaurant in Warunga, is 0 0.00011 square miles, but apparently has, quote, no surprises, good or bad. So why is Australia overrun with a bunch of bovine micronations? Well, a lot of it is explained by taking a look at this map. Now, the first thing you'll notice when you look at this map is that a lot of it is very red, and if you're thinking that seems probably bad, great news, you're about one <laughs> sentence ahead of me. A huge portion of Australia falls under the charmingly blunt distinction, hot desert. European settlers took one look at this desert, gave up, and declared it on this map as useless, overlooking the fact that indigenous people had managed to live off those lands for centuries, but they also took one look. <laughs> of course, of course they overlooked that. So basically that piece of land was just, from the European perspective, way too hot. And so therefore worth nothing. So some some private entities bought it up for they were able to buy an entire country's worth. Look at some other bits of slightly less hot, slightly less dry desert and awarded it the distinction of sparse grazing lands. But even with its not um. useless designation, Anna Creek Station isn't exactly welcoming. It is sparse vegetation, only gets about 8 inches or 20 centimeters of rain a year, and can reach up to 131 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 oh degrees crap. Celsius, a temperature scientifically known as very, very hot. And that's why the station's so big. No because the vegetation's so sparse, it just takes a massive area to give the cattle, in a good year, about 17,000, enough to graze on. For comparison, King Ranch, the largest ranch in... So cattle are, are, are they're, they're all right hanging out there in 130 degrees. Holy shoot. The U.S. is less than one-seventh the size of Anna Creek, yet supports about twice the number of cattle on its wetter, cooler, more vegetated landscape. So... The U.S. is... It's only seven times bigger than this ranch. Supports about is what I took away from about that. About twice the number of cattle on its wetter, cooler, more vegetated landscape. So how does the okay. farm the size of 147 Liechtensteins manage to operate? Well, the key, of course, is staff. And to operate a potentially Israel-sized piece of land, they employ a massive 11 people. <laughs> one manager, eight staff. You could probably really slack off at this job. Like, literally no one would even be within five hours of driving <laughs> if you were slacking off. It would take the boss till tomorrow to come check on what you're doing. Hands, a plant operator, and a cook. Yep, 11. Many of whom are young and functionally apprentices called, and this is true, jackaroos and jillaroos. No this way. This enormous area is run by the <laughs> same number of... Any jackaroos out there watching? ...people as a somewhat busy McDonald's, largely thanks to technology. It operates its faraway water pumps remotely with UHF radio waves, and cattle are often located using low-flying plane runs, and then round... What? ...rounded up by station hands on motorbikes instead of horses because... No way. Oh my god. These jillaroos, jackaroos have the most fun job in the world. I hope they're having the time of their life. It, w it might get a little bit lonely. But driving around the desert on a motorbike? Rounding up cattle? Flying a plane? 
over them to see what they're doing? Because motorbikes typically don't experience heat stroke. The staff primarily <laughs> operates out of this single homestead, powered by a diesel generator and satellite internet connection. <laughs> if you need to go to town, the nearest is here, Cooper PD. Although, to be honest, calling it a town is generous. Wow. It's got a population of just 1,762 people. It's got a jeweler. Basically, everyone lives in these crazy underground caves like they're in a mid-2000s YA just so- No shit. Is he kidding? Oh, yeah. There's actually an even smaller town in the center of the property here called William Creek. It's got a little hotel, a pub, some campgrounds, and even... That is just fascinating. Look at this pub. Is that actually underground? And they haven't got a new TV for 40 years. My God, but why would there be a hotel? Like, who the, who's staying there? That is, that is truly fascinating. Now, that would be a good YouTube video. Like, you, got, you know these guys who go to weird hotels and stuff? Go there. I want to know, like, what's the staff? It's like there would be cobwebs when you walk in. Like, they'd, someone's here. Wake up. Someone's here. Claim is a nine-hole golf course, but what is more accurately nine holes dug kind of far away from each other in the middle of the desert. But these facilities actually see decent business from tourists taking the treacherous trip to Lake Eyre. The hotel regularly sees most of its wow. 53 rooms booked and is the core of wow. the economy in the town with an official population of just 10. <laughs> Both William. <laughs> what happens when like one family moves out? The entire population crashes. Creek and the nearby station homestead are served mail by the Cooper PD Udnadatta One Day Mail Run, a delightfully quaint bus that goes from Cooper PD to William Creek to Udnadatta on unpaved 4x4 roads twice a week as an official Australia Post contractor. But no way! Also offering spots for tourists who can experience the thrill of going over whatever jibber planes are. The issue jibber planes. The largest privately owned piece of land raises the question. Oh my god. Now I know what I want to do if I go to Australia. I need to get on this little bus and go over the jibber planes. The issue of the largest privately owned piece of land raises the question, who privately owns it? Well, before the comments start going insane, I should point out that technically, Anna Creek Station is not privately owned, but privately held, under something called a pastoral lease, where the land is technically owned by the Australian government, and there are certain ways mm. pastoralists are required to use it. Now that I haven't said- Oh, so they can't just like go start their own country anything in this video that will upset people, I can move on to telling you that for most of its history, Anna Creek was owned by Sir Sidney Kidman, who at the time of his death owned nearly 4% of Australia's mainland, and before you ask, yes, he is related to Antonia Kidman. Recently- <laughs> I have to go back and see if that's true. Antonia Kidman is Nicole Kidman's not famous sister. He's related to Nicole Kidman is the joke. No, I didn't love the joke. I'm disappointed. Recently, S. Kidman & Co. was in the process of being sold to a joint venture between Hancock Prospecting and Shanghai Cred, but the government refused to let this part foreign ownership buy Anna Creek for national security reasons, given mm. that Anna Creek lies within the Woomera prohibited area, home to the largest land weapons testing range in the world. Instead, that would make sense. Ed, the largest tract of land in the world is now held by Williams Cattle Company, who also owns five neighboring properties, giving them a total land ownership larger than Switzerland, and the official title of number one owner of giant Australian cattle stations except for S. Kidman & Co., which still has slightly Congrats. Numbers. Look, to be honest, if you just finished watching this whole video about Australian cattle stations, you're kind of a nerd. <laughs> which is great, because we are too, and that's how we know that you'll love our sponsor, Brilliant. The whole purpose of how- Brilliant. Well, I do love this channel. That's fascinating. I, I, that's, I mean, I don't know what else to say. That is fascinating. That one company, 11 people control that much land. I don't know what you would do with it, though. I mean, you're by law, they have to raise cattle. <laughs> I don't know. That That is just fascinating. Why does it need to be that much land? How many cattle is there? How could you have enough cattle to fill up, like, Switzerland? Anyway, that was very interesting. I'm, like, deep in thought. Like, I can't even speak. I'm like, huh? Anyway, go check out Half as, Inter Half as Interesting. And thank you for watching, guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Maybe I'll see you tomorrow. I mean, I'll be here. Okay.